Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boston. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle, man. It's your boy ECO. And I'm one of the most, by the way. We create content every damn day. Hey, man. I like, hey, listen, man. Hey, man. Hey, hey, it's days like this, man. Uh, uh, I, I enjoy doing the show, man. You Me know, I, I got a guy in here now, man. He really don't need no introduction, man. I seen him on shows in Cali. I seen him in shows in New York and in Texas now, man. This guy here, he uh, he definitely uh, 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 one that's been around, man, and has helped a lot of different cases when there was issues, man. But the last time he was here, we had a viral moment, man. This guy came on the show, and it was a lot of, hey, man, it was a lot went on that day. And I didn't get to interview him after that, but but we, we hung out a little bit after that, though. Hey, I'm here this time, though. Oh, you wasn't here last time. I wasn't here. Check it, man. Melvin Farman's in the building. Hey, thank you for having me, man, and mm-hmm. welcome, Texas. And we up in here, man, hitting corners. We're going to give you news before it's news today. Day, man, y'all getting breaking news. Say, <laughs> say, man, I, I ain't gonna lie. When I when I think about you and your legacy and the times that I've gotten to interview now, I really enjoy your interviews. When you left here, man, I've seen you on different platforms. Cam Capone, shout out to my boy Cam Capone. Cam Capone is a dope dude, man. And uh, ever since I uh, had a chance to work with him, uh, man, it's been just a, a, a relationship building thing. And uh, you guys did a great job on this show. And thanks for wearing the Boss Talk I, shirt. I love that, I man. Love Boy, I love it. Oh, yes, hey, we got I you some more before you leave Texas. We gonna have you uh, oh, we ain't this minute. I gotta have some too, my friend. <laughs> you you gotta leave the next uh, by the end of this week. I'm gonna have you a stack up. I'm gonna have you some. Okay, yeah, I, I promise you. We'll talk about that. <laughs> there you go. We're going to make sure you're right, though. Yes, yeah. Thank you for coming back on the show, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. Man. Yeah, man. Um, So when you left, you know, I seen you. Uh, It was some things that were said. Uh, Definitely some things. I, I seen one where you said that Charleston had gotten tied up. One time, and um, I didn't, I, I didn't know the story or whatever. There was some things also said about different things that been going on because there was some killings and stuff that happened in L.A. Uh, uh, I don't know if Slim Four Hundred he hadn't died uh, before you, when y'all came last time. No, because no. I'd asked you about that. No, he wouldn't. And also uh, Drakeo, I believe Drakeo, uh, the ruler. You the uh, ruler. And those are questions that you hear co- me, you know, coming at you about today for sure. But just, uh, just give us. So Spiel, what you doing in Texas, man? Oh, man, I'm down here. Uh, I'm on Charleston White uh, behind its uh, <laughs> presence around juveniles. Okay. Uh, I'm getting the information that Charleston is barred from working with children here in Dallas, Fort Worth area, but I noticed uh, he was in Memphis mentoring some children. Don't forget, we're talking about a self-admitted man that said he was a rapist, told his mama he wanted to be in porn, uh, he showed his genitals on Facebook, and I don't think his presence need to be around no children. Okay, now that's a good way of looking I, at it. Yeah, but I, I I've been with him a couple of times. For as went to the juvenile and spoke with him, um, and also here on the platform brought brought kids from the juvenile here, and we gave them clothes and everything else. So I just hold on, hold on, hold on, bro, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold up, Chief. What does that have to do with a man that said he raped a woman and he's around children? There's proceedings and protocols. Okay. I'm here because Charleston White bragged about some kids in Memphis, but he also said he's not going to mention the school, and it's the reason why. Oh, okay. So I want to know the name of that school since he always talking about bragging and this and that, and there's a reason why he didn't say it. Because people have been complaining okay. behind the sh- things that you are talking about where he can't go back no more. See, this is illegal. Okay, issue. so this is stuff that's transpired within Since the midst. Then. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, yes. And also we have information that he attacked and tried to assault a 16-year-old uh, at another event where the man called me. And, in fact, he got into a wrestling match behind that. And the man will come on television and say he never would recommend Charleston White. To be around children. This was after y'all. Uh, this, this was after the uh, incident with uh, Mob James yeah. that occurred. So we have other people that are quite uh, uh, opposite of what you guys are. And like I say, I don't care about him being around no uh, young adults, youths. This one, yeah, because they were youths that came on here. Yeah, these are children. What would a forty-four-year-old man be telling some second and fourth? 
fifth grader, it's about game banging. That's when you get Smokey the Bear, Boy Scouts, and things of this nature. But at the yeah. end of the day, uh, we have to take a responsibility. You wouldn't want him around your child uh, talking all that. You wouldn't let him around your child, but yet you would have him on your show like this is cool. Now, I've heard people plenty of times have said and bragged about their killer, their robber, their dope dealer. But in all my time, I've never heard nobody brag about raping nobody. Never. So this is a very serious issue. Let me ask you, is this according to the, when him and Wack 100 was in that uh, clubhouse and they was having a back and forth uh, or, or that, that this became a, a prevalent conversation? Well, uh, he's mentioned it before that he did it, but that's what made it uh, relevant and uh, made it newsworthy. But you also looked over the fact that Mob James also said that uh, Charleston White uh, acted inappropriately around children, and y'all passed that up to get sound bites and likes. I don't even look at that. I'm going for where well, I've done civil rights. Some of the biggest cases in America, Amadou Diallo, Prince Jones, Margaret Laverne Mitchell, Sharice Iverson, Taisha Mill, I can name a gang of them. I do this when I feel somebody's civil rights are being violated to where otherwise people would not address that issue. We have to take an issue whether uh, it's right or wrong, but in this case, there's no reason for a sexual deviant, and I'm saying it, to be allowed around children. Now, if Charleston want to make a complaint about it, just tell us the name of the school. I bet you he won't do it. Hey, I'm kind of glad you're doing this because we need more people like you to do this type of stuff, not just because of Charleston, but to anybody just in the world. Yeah. Anybody. Just anybody in the world. Anybody. Like, I, anybody. I, I understand what you're doing. I support it all the way 100. Like, it don't matter. If it's about kids and doing like that, I support it 100%. That's a different ball game. Who speaks for the kid? We hear Kevin Gates. Oh, I endorse what he said. I want to know what you say now that you know this going on. And we got a video. So you're up. saying, Kevin, you want to know what Kevin Gates is saying? Opinion said. is now, since he said he admired him then, what is your opinion of him now? And anybody else that want to step to the mic? We got a pedophile, a sexual deviant, and usually I work with an organization called Youth Mixed Martial Arts. World known, won the championship where they deal with youths from the ages of 8 to 18. But we're specifically on that board, the first ever to have prison records, but we got appointed to that board for one reason, to make sure the trainers, the coaches, the parents qualify, we vet them to make sure there are no dangers to the children. If we would use that standard with the uh, people that he's around, he would not be allowed to come in. So we know what we see, where the naked eye might not see it or the ears may omit it. But I know he omitted the fact of the school that he went to when he bragged about everything else. And he say real silently, I ain't going to tell the name of the school. And it's a reason. Because they own him about it, and that school is liable. Because if they knew of his behavior prior to this, then that school need to be uh, chastised and brought up to answer questions. In fact, Any anybody other? that know anything and don't say nothing for sound bites and likes need to be checked. Mm. Well, hey man, like I said, I definitely uh I definitely uh I definitely had him on the show a lot and I um definitely uh a lot of the stuff it wasn't about the kids when we were having the interviews, but I understand where you're coming from. Me you too. know, yeah, I that's totally just the issue. We can keep it moving. We don't have to do that because we're gonna let the courts desettle this. Because also, he might be pending assault charges from this youth at 16 years old. So uh, let's look at it like this: They got laws when you uh, have to register as a sex offender, where you can't go around schools for 500 feet yeah. uh, and all that, just like selling dope. So why is it we got a man that admitted? He's done these things, enjoyed doing it, but he's allowed within 500 feet. Whether he convicted by the court of law or by the streets, we got rules and principalities that go down here that when it involve a child, it's yeah. zero tolerance. You're right, but I think everybody looking at it for us like he like he hasn't been convicted or no, so it's looking like they are sport. That's why I think people look at ass. Right, because like, they're about to prove innocent. I mean, instant proven guilty until they dumb enough to say they did it. Yeah. And once it come out of his mouth, if you can believe that, one of the most powerful things is education 
and the teacher's profession. When somebody addressing somebody, the trust has to be there all the way around to where they stand on what they speak on. This man does not, and I'm not dirty macking him, because I got videos where I don't put, I put him in the game. Not him put me in the game. I put him in the game. I took him to Nipsey Hussle. I had him do Alex Alonzo. I made it when he got ran out from here to come meet me over a bowl of soup where I didn't know him no more than a one-man lineup. I wouldn't have been able to pick him out. And everybody he been around, he don't turn on. Oh, so let me ask you this. Last time we was here, and, and I know people want to hear about just like um, – when, when the situation went down, it was some people felt like you had threatened him when you said, you know, uh, he, you called him a shock jock, but you also said that he was, uh, 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 you know, he, you could be judged by 12 or carried, carried by six. six. What Explain that to me. Well, let's go by what he said. He had died for what he living for, so I just said you can die by 12 or be judged by six or whatever. So you was answering his I question. I was answering his question. I don't silence this violence. Running your mouth on the internet and internet game banging and Adolf Twitler, that ain't how this game go. I don't make no idle threats. I didn't come here. In fact, why don't you explain what happened when I told you let me open the show? Yeah. Because I wasn't even going on there, remember? Yeah, you, it probably been just a total Charleston Marv and, 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 Marv. and, Marv. and, and they you, supposed to went back. And, but I wanted you to be on the right, panel. But, and yeah, but look what did I say. I said I don't want to be on there. Am I correct? No, then I you, said, if you do, let me open the show, because you can't dictate how you yeah. open no show. And I said, open it with me. That way we can, cre can create the guidelines about no profanity, no disrespect, and y'all had a healthy okay. debate. Yeah, a healthy but debate. But you instead I went to Charleston, because Charleston you, no, no. was sitting right there. I don't, I don't care. Did, that's you, a no, habit, no, 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 no. It might have been, <laughs> but it's right, the one. Ain't nothing like, wrong with it. Everybody go that way first, man. Yeah, and that's why I went that way second. <laughs> no, so, so I mean, so as, so you right, but I'm no, just saying. No, listen to this learning. No, I get yeah, it. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so put it for the record, I wasn't even supposed to have been on there. I told yeah, you I don't yeah. like being interviewed. Yeah, you did say that, and I, I like being behind the cameras. Y'all like me. I love for you to uh, get on, man. You one of the dopest interviews that I have done. Like I enjoy talking to you I, ever since I met you through Charleston. When I met you. I basically was like, man, when, once I seen you, the first one come with a notepad. The minute you mm -hmm. niggas know that. The man come yeah, prepared to talk. Yeah, yeah, he come to talk, and he don't mess around with it. And, and I really enjoy the informative information. And it's always something that can help people that listen to yeah. it. And they really, really, uh, 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 you know, drawn to it because it's good conversation, good game, man. So, and, and last time we was here, you know, uh, the storming out, you ran out. You, you Hey! I, I never forget that when you holler when you went to the door, people wanted to know what the heck happened after then. Well, all I did, I walked up because he was hesitating, fudging, going in and out, and I'm saying, hey, come on back. And then he pulled back, and all I did was say, man, steel, sharp and steel. Yeah. And I walked on off. Wow, man. Hey, it's crazy you said that. Because you heard it too? No, it's not that. It's like I was writing a song the other day, no? first line said, iron, sharp and iron. Oh, yeah? That's the first line. Iron Shop and Iron. What did you think? Because you missed that show. Uh, you wasn't here that day. This He's been with me ever since I started this. What did you think? You was like, man. <laughs> to be honest, I wanted to be here. Like I really wanted to be here, but I couldn't talk on that day. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, was, I wanted to be here just, just so it wouldn't go that way it was going to go. Yeah, like, yeah. Because like, you know people be in their feelings about certain stuff, and they want to say what they want to and. It is what it is. But at the end of the day, it's a conversation. Yeah, and it needs to be had. So I, I definitely, I had called Charleston over here. Uh, since then, he don't even he he really don't rock with the show no more. You know, a lot of that was a a, a part of where it first started being a, a issue. But um, I definitely uh, had some good time for us when it came down to this show. It helped the show a lot when he would come on here. I'm not gonna say. Uh, you know, that. we you know I'm backstage where I look at the numbers and stuff, yeah. but I don't do sound. I could respond to a lot of stuff. Yeah, I see you, but I don't. I, I do my work when the boots not like they didn't know that it was me that 
got you Fazio. Yeah, love. yeah, or yeah. You uh, well, you have with, with well, Faison Love. With, yeah, with on Love. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, you got Reggie Wright. Reggie coming White on. coming. You got yep. Fred Hampton coming. Yeah, so yeah, Fred. I, like I talked to, to Fred Hampton. Like, yeah, so I like to bring in the background and, and be in the background to where other people's voices can be heard. Like I'm shooting them to Cam Capone. Shout out to Cam today, Brooklyn Batman. If y'all want to know about Pox Pokes. Uh, Fabio Foreign Joy Badass Check the interview out With my boy out of New York EGG From out in NYC Hey So uh, Just a little I guess I'll go back A, a little bit More into uh, Just When you um When you was down here Last time man And And you gave that The first interview You know We talked about Took you And we talked about How you know How things first started You know Um as far as family members of Tookie Williams, do you still keep in contact with any of those people? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, more so, uh, every now and then I see his son. Okay. Uh, 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 his son and uh, Bonnie, uh, which was his ex-wife, uh, she uh, just did an interview with Kev, Mac, and uh, most of his people are pretty much uh, gone now. Mostly I know who were associates. Uh, uh, with him. In fact, me and Reggie Wright Jr. Sr.'s daddy were talking about Tookie. Uh, uh, Reggie Wright, the Compton Police, his father has a lot of history and knowledge uh, back in there, but very few of them that are related uh, to Tookie uh, do we still. Lil Wayne, his uh, stepbrother died, Wayne Calloway, then it was Bridget, then it was Vicky. So I haven't been in contact with him too much over the years as we're getting older. Yeah, yeah, we are. And you're getting older. You you guys, y'all started out at 13, 12, hanging out together? Well, I knew him about at about 13, 14. At that time, it was about 17 or 18. Okay. Uh, he was about 17 or 18. He only lived to be about 24, 25. Wow. So that was about an eight-year run. Wow. So when you when you, when you look at the way things have, and I asked uh, a total because I've got a lot of views on one of my th deals because I asked him and he gave an analogy of people who were using uh, the, the 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 crip or blood or pyru a uh, name and and generating finances over it, but really not. Uh, doing anything in those communities, some have never been to those communities. Um, what do you have to say about that? Well, it's not just people. Uh, you got uh, the hat companies that uh, you know the LA Dodger hats yeah. are blue, but they'll make the hats red because they know through marketing and research and that. In L.A., a lot of guys won't buy the blue hat, but if we make it red. So it's sort of like when Jesse Jackson used to go backstage and uh, threaten the Coca-Cola company, and then they go meet him back door. I think it's sad that a lot of people are using this culture and the blood of others uh, to exploit this culture that was created in Los Angeles, mind you, and then getting blood off the back of people who's dying in the streets. And debt makes you really want to wonder, do they really want this to stop? It's too profitable. You know, you have, uh, this is not no rap song that end in three minutes. This is not no book where you open it up and it's closed. This go on when you're on that pavement 24 hours a day. You can wipe up water, but when somebody bleed, that blood leaves stains. Wow. Yeah, and, and just to be, did you ever see from the time, because I know when you guys first was coming up, uh, did you ever think it would last this long and go this far? From the, I'm talking about from that 14-ish, 15-ish age. No, we wasn't even thinking on no level. We didn't even know what we was doing because everything was so new. You have to remember they've always had games, always had some type of game. It's just what you was marching for. And we were totally different from a lot of them, and it was because of the vacuum that was created in Los Angeles when the police infiltrated the uh, us organizations, the Black Panthers, and that's when there was a void, and people would make the mistake of saying it's the police that started the Crips and the Bloods. I'm gonna speak on the Crips, I can't speak on the Bloods, and I'm gonna speak on the West Side, because I'm from the West Side. And uh, we come when we uh, integrated with Raymond Washington, they were off the East Side, then you had the Comptons. So at the end of the day, we wasn't thinking about no, uh, revolutionary uh, ideas or ideologies. We was 14, 13, 15 year old boys, hadn't had sex with our socks off, sneaking out the window at night. And a lot of people say, well, your parents, 
our parents from back then, it's yours. My mama from Mississippi, my daddy from Memphis, they migrated here. So we were basically the new blacks in Los Angeles uh, at that time, because it was integrated on our side of town. Uh, it was still integrated and things of this nature. We getting uh, 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 giant slides, uh, go-karts, uh, swimming pools, uh, wooden basketball courts with glass, uh, backboards and all this stuff. Whereas when I moved off the east side, off the Hoover Corridor, we wouldn't, so it was a cultural shock. But they didn't have gangs on the west side. They had cliques, because they didn't have no older guys over there. The most you would see back then was somebody like Tookie them, 18. But they wasn't doing what they do now, so at the end of the day, nobody could imagine uh, at this time back then and think back 50 years later to the future. They wasn't thinking like that. No. Wow. Um, so um, when you think back to um, like uh, the times when when Rodney King uh, was, was when the riots and all that went on, uh, what do you because you you so keen on the way you conversate about things and me be real with you. I interview a, a lot of people, you know, and what during those times, uh, what sticks out to you? During the Rodney King? Yeah, the Rodney King era and all that well, stuff. Well, what sticked out to me is the law enforcement when he first got arrested. I had got arrested in Pasadena for boosting. Okay. Three of us. We making bags and dropping them in there, make the metal and neck. We hustling. We get cracked. I go to Pasadena court, and uh, while we sitting in there, this after Rodney King just had got beat up at the beginning. They say, any of y'all know Rodney King? Now, I don't got busted dead bank. So I say, man, we might can talk our way up out of this. I say, yeah, I know Rodney King. He say, well, you ever been to prison? Well, you was in jail with him. I know Rodney King from the man in the moon. I say, yeah. He say, well, what can you tell us about Rodney King? I say, what you trying to find out? He say, well, we need to know if he was violent in prison. I say, man, I can tell you all about that. <laughs> he let me go and my buddy go and gave somebody else the case. And I told him, i think about it. They gave me the card, Internal Affairs. It got a big uh, 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 shield on it, and I forgot about it. So I'm in jail doing a violation behind this now. And all of a sudden, Internal Affairs come, and now they want me to come give a disposition. I was so scared, I had on glasses and flushed them down the toilet. Because <laughs> I say, whoever did something with these police, they had to tell them I had glasses on. I, I know I was in trouble. <laughs> So that was happened on that, and they got on me on that. In fact, that was one of the main reasons they came back and uh, framed me when the three strikes. But when the Rodney King happened, incident happened, I was locked up. But I also knew that, uh, you know, a Trey Gangsters, uh, football, the L.A. Four, and all them uh, was the ones that allegedly hit Reginald Denny in the head. So it was ironic that uh, uh, videotaping this type of stuff where you can have clear-cut evidence that a, a man had been physically assaulted and uh, uh, his violations, civil rights were violated by law enforcement and that it got away. But as far as it shocking me now, because that's been going on for well, quite some yeah. time. So I hear you ever, talk about that all the time. It's still going on. And it's yeah, still, it's still going, going on. on today. And uh, we're trying to make it to where we have a better uh, redress when people file complaints. A lot of times these complaints, uh, just like uh, the uh, murder with the young man in Minnesota, uh, the police show vine. He had 17 complaints and priors before he even got caught for this one. So we have to start looking into better oversight when it comes to uh, law enforcement and their violation of people uh, on the streets of color and uh, of uh, poorness, uh, the way they're being adversely affected and their civil rights are being live violated. Wow. I'm, glad, I'm glad you said that because I got. Hey, it's nothing wrong with filing the police. I mean, filing a report on the police officers. It's really protecting you. It's not hurting you for doing that. It's protecting you. It's to actually getting the bad police off the street and helping the good ones survive. It's nothing wrong with filing a police report. So don't think that just because you file a police report, you're not gangster none of that. Forget that. You're helping yourself and your community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, when I when I look back at time, man, you you being a, a, a guy who you season, you understand, you actually I remember when rap started um, <clears throat> when 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 hip hop came on the scene. I know, and, and you always talk about Michael Concession. Um, how do you feel it uh, changed the, the 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 environment and the way things was moving in in the L.A. Uh, you know, in the L.A. area? 
Well, at first, hip hop, it was Soul Train, Gang Banging, and Pop Locking. Yeah, yeah. That's what was popping, 71, 72, 73. And then later on, when the drug trade come in and they started, because a lot of the uh, uh, hip hop uh, culture and uh, companies started from uh, drug transactions. You mean 81, 82, and Yeah, well, they've been up in yeah. there, all up in like there. 80s, 80, yeah, 85. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying, but I'm saying in the I 70s. No. At the end of the 77 7, they started with the cocaine, eat the yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when the drug game started mixing in with the gang banging. Okay. And that started that. Then from that went the money to start getting into hip hop. Hip hop. And from there, uh, they started uh, uh, NWA, Michael Conception, we all in the game, same game, and other uh, group of men that was coming back out in the early 80s. And then the game started changing a little bit when it started seeing that it was profitable uh, and it, this culture started changing and it started being acceptable to be a crip or a blood and it became fashionable. And it went from there, it started off at uh, F the police and it ended up now with F each other mm. or bitches and hoes and shit like this is sexual and it's so bad uh, to where we had these type of images uh, that portraying us as for as being exploited by those that are top, usually the Jews or the white, and they have certain artists that have been around where now they're running a monopoly in the game where you got to go through this rapper, this actor, and mm -hmm. a lot of these youths are getting beat and getting contracts and uh, that aren't worth nothing where they end up the way they come in, uh, broken everything else. So it's a shady, hectic game like Tupac said, but at the end of the day, uh, the images that's being depicted, uh, I have a reservation about, but I also know about the freedom of speech to where it's, you got several different sections of a newspaper. Some people read this section, some people read that section, so I understand that. But overall, I don't like some of the uh, images or the language that's being uh, depicted in the rap game now, particularly when those aren't living the life that they are talking about. Mm. But other people are trying to catch up to them, seeing the jury, thinking this stuff. It's, it's hard work to get into entertainment. It's very hard work. I watch this, them guys. So it's not that easy where you're going to come up overnight and be no superstar. You have to be born with it wow. a lot of times. When you, you said Tupac, which is a good name. Tupac came to California uh, uh, early on and went back and forth. It, it seemed like he had a back and forth situation from New York to to California. But when he <coughs> came and embraced the mob, uh, the blood member, uh, the MOB is what he would say. And uh, I remember watching that whole thing when him and uh, Biggie was into it. And I want to say Biggie was more of a, a blue side, uh, somewhat insinuated crip. I'm gonna be. That's where I seen it. You know, um, it seemed as if it was that type of. They took that and married it into the. The, uh, the 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 rivalry it seemed that way now I could be wrong but that's what it seemed to me during the time from the outside looking in um, but when I look at um, Biggie coming down there and dying in that area where were you at when that happened uh, I don't know when he got where, killed I don't know where I was at uh, at that time but I know what was being said. Behind, okay. uh, especially on the streets, because I know at that time he had made something like a, I'm coming back to Cali. He's going back to Cali, yeah. He yeah. coming, coming. He did that from that old LL song. Yeah, well, I know in the streets of LA when they were saying uh, he's coming back to Cali, Cali, they were saying to get killed, to get killed, to get killed. Oh, God. So that was the talk on <laughs> wow. the streets. So, so they yeah. already were saying that before he even came. Yeah. Wow. So, so, and, and you were hearing that. And the reason I ask you this is because from Texas understanding something and living in LA and having to deal with it and the streets is, is, is talking and the people is, uh, the environment is a, is a certain way. Um, even when I look at just even here, when Mo three, uh, got killed, uh, on the highway, it sends a certain aura through the city. I know for a fact when that happened, it's a certain aura in the city. Am I right? Yes, sir. You know what I mean? So I know you being there would give me a different explanation than what I would be thinking being in Texas. That's why I asked. Yeah, because it's just like a lot of people don't know the aura when Nipsey got killed. That's another one. Or uh, Slim 400. Usually what happens is 
particularly with the internet and how quickly things could get out that might not be true rumors and stuff like that, and which could lead to somebody getting killed, particularly if they say another war faction did it when in fact they didn't. Mm-hmm. But just like, for example, when Nipsey Hussle uh, uh, was slain and uh, uh, condolences to his family. And, and those and Black Sam, yeah. the Black Sam and his, and his mother and his father mm-hmm. and him, they have a church right up the street from us. But uh, I remember that night clearly where I was uh, standing up over a rooftop and you could see it was real dark gray right up the street from uh, where the uh, incident happened. And you can hear nothing but sirens and uh, fire engines and just a whole bunch of mess. But, uh, you know, I got a show called uh, Voices from the Street, Sounds of the Streets, and you couldn't hear nothing. Wow. The stock car's head got off the street. And uh, everybody went in the house because they at the time they didn't know who had killed Nipsey, and they knew if certain uh, organizations were even mentioned about doing it, it could explode. So that whole night it was dark, gray, overcast, real spooky, and wasn't nobody on the streets, mm. nobody. But even more importantly, after they had L.A. gangs unite. Uh, and all of them came over uh, over to honor Nipsey Hussle. We did uh, uh, Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, where I worked with Yo Yo and Apple Watts. I did the security for them when we filmed that. Uh, it was sad that the elected officials, all of those local elected and state officials, did not kind of intervene to keep the dialogue going. Mm-hmm. And that's what's one of the problems that happens out here when we go back to, we have to look at our local elected officials as far as making a change and maybe have to start getting them out of office if they've been there 10, 15 years within the same district and it's nothing changed. Uh, we have to start looking toward changing people in office and making sure the funding go to those that are actually doing the work that can make an impact and make a difference in the community. I seen you when that was going on. I seen you in New York on Hot 97 a was, little I bit after that. that. Go ahead. Uh, uh, wasn't this was Hustle building a school? Uh, I can't say if he was building a school. I, and f- I think he was doing something over there. I wouldn't doubt it, though. I think I did see somewhere they had a basketball court colorfully painted uh, somewhere right up in his community. So I can't uh, specifically say yes, but I think I wouldn't put it past him. He so did I, a lot for I, I, I heard of it, but I was like, if, if he died, instead of instead of going to his store, supporting the store, why not help everybody build that school that he wanted to build? Build that school up for to help the other black kids to actually that didn't need I mean need the help to where they can go to because I think that's what he was building a school for like a performance school for black people. Yes, sir. And I think it was a trade school, mm-hmm. something like that. Yes, sir. So I was like it was going to help help the other black people to come in. So like if he was going to build that school, why not get together? Everybody get together that has money that's willing to help him and build that school. Yes, keep sir. It, keep it going. Just yes, his sir. legacy. Sound good to me. I was like I would rather for that to happen than everybody supporting him talking about going to his store. Like everybody went to his stores and stuff. They could put money. It got closed down right yeah, after that, though. His store gone now, but that school could have still been up right now. Hip but the store could have been there if it was it was an organized deal where he, if they actually, and I don't know the ins and outs of it, but if that shopping center was owned by them, um, then they could have kept things going. But it became a somewhat. I heard drive-bys and all kind of stuff. We from outside looking in, yeah. But you hear these things. Like I, I heard, I heard it. you I, can't go sure. over there. If you go over there, you might get shot up. But just for going over there looking, all kind of stuff. I've heard some crazy stuff about that store that me and my wife frequented before all this happened. We was going there when he was living. I never went there when he had de- died. I only went there when he was living. I went, me and Black Sam, it's pictures. Me and him, uh, we, we have a family. You see what we do, kind of the same thing. So I was drawn to him because my brother had mentioned it. And it was like, yeah, Stevie man- mentioned it to me. He said, man, go by there and see Nipsey and him and go see, you know, and I had met Nipsey at the uh, uh, Palms Hotel. And when I met him, I was like, dang, man, I said, you ain't been doing everything like you need to be doing I, 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 on the music. And he was like, yeah, you're going to see. Yeah, he was telling me about the new stuff he had coming, whether it were blue laces or whatever. We, this was years before he passed away. He had had This was after he had first came out, and he was like real, you know, we knew him in Texas because he reminded me of Snoop. I ain't going to lie, during that time. And I was like, dang, man, you, what you been doing lately? This was like in 2011. Maybe mm-hmm. 2012, and he was like, "You gonna see, you gonna see." And after that, I think he sold albums to Jay Z 
for a hundred dollars or something. It may have been after that, but I just know me and him had a hell of a conversation right there at the check in. We was at check in together, mm -hmm. and it was just me and him, just because I go to you know nice spots, and he ended up being there. But then after that, a few years later, me and my wife and kids would go by his store because we own this store and we've been had a long time. So it was like mutual doing the same thing, kind of you know, mm -hmm. just supplying the community. Mm -hmm. um, so how did how does it they end up losing the spot after he passed away. Nobody kept up with it. Nobody does anything after that. No, uh, I can't speak on uh, what happened to that property. In fact, all of it's closed down. It's closed down, the whole thing, the right? The whole thing is closed down with a tarp around it where you can't see, you can't see in there. Or nothing like that. Wow. But the last time I uh, uh, seen Nipsey and had a conversation with him was possibly maybe a week before that, or not too long, Joey Badass was on tour and had a concert at uh, Greek uh, for uh, all of uh, all time done or something like that. Uh, had all the elected officials, uh, Joey Badass, Guapoli, uh, uh quite a few artists. And uh, Nipsey Hussle also was on stage there, and we all was back there in the back. And uh, we was talking back there then, uh, couple of weeks or uh, right after that is when the incident happened. Wow. Yeah, man. I know that I'm sorry. I hate that happened, man. Definitely loved it. The, the movement loved everything because it was a lot of positivity with a lot of the things that he done. Um, and you think about that L.A. area, like I said, it can become dangerous real fast. Uh, Pop Smoke, I believe he was up there when he got uh, killed. Uh, he had shown himself being somewhere and, and somebody seen it. I believe is what I heard. Now, I don't know because I wasn't there, but um, just why is it so violent uh, when it come down to these rap artists and the things that they're doing? Is it because of the money or what? <clears throat> well, you know, they to me, they in a world of their own where they get to interact with each other and they don't taking it too far to where they're trying to live up to the image. And, you know, I'm going to put it like this. The only thing stronger than a man's pride is a mother's love. A man and woman will swallow every pill known to man to stay alive. But a lot of men or women won't swallow their pride. They, they get up in here, you have a lot of money involved. Uh, they don't know each other and it's a, 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 a camaraderie to where it doesn't make no sense to where you have to go and uh, uh, kill off good talent. Uh, look at all these talented officers. Uh, uh, artists uh, getting their life destroyed uh, over uh, image and acting and talking about something that uh, uh, really doesn't adversely affect them. Because usually when you're in the rap game, you're so far away from what's going on that you got to get your stories from somebody else. That's why a lot of times you're seeing with street credibility dudes around them or else, how else they going to know the stories to tell the same what they do. And I just think it's a shame that they said and target each other, argue with each other, then take it uh, uh, measures to the extreme to where uh, somebody's parent is crying, somebody's daughter has lost their father. And it just, uh, it really needs to be resolved. They need to have uh, some type of dialogue, create some type of dialogue and understand them that's what's acceptable. If you got a beef, sit up and talk. You don't have to air it out on the internet, but once again, this social media, uh, uh, this what they call it, where you trolling and looking around. It has changed, and uh, we're abusing social media as well as the entertainment. We're abusing it as our rates. Don't nobody do the things we doing to each other then broadcast that you can go on the internet and see that your child has been killed quicker than you can mm -hmm. getting a call from the coroner. That's not acceptable. It's not, and we have to stand up and create some platforms to where we just can't be giving guys like somebody hollering out, I raped somebody and we'll rape again, and you got him on television. Yeah. That don't make, no, 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 no. It's rules to this game, man. But we don't apply them because everything cool. But that ain't how that go for everybody, man. That ain't how that should be, man. Well, you you got people like, uh, like I said, I see the collaborations too. The, 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 I want to take it back to L.A. for a second with like uh, uh, Blueface. Blueface and uh, um, WAC 100 is his manager or whatever. Um, but they represent, um, I know Blueface represents the Crips. Um, do, when you look at what 
these guys uh, are doing now, and, and whether good or bad or just being an artist, are you proud of what, what they've become in, 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 in this current environment? I'm, I'm, I'm proud of anybody that can get up out the mud Probably. and come up and come up and grind and come up out the mud and make it. Uh, like I say, I don't, uh, I don't choose to listen to the contents, and other people might not choose, but they got an area where people like them. So, no, I'm happy for anybody. It's just that when you do get there, be a builder. Bring somebody with you. Come back and bring those that were with you when you was down and out. Too many times they'll go and leave and forget about it and don't come back and help those that where you can give back. Because a lot of times you got to put your faith in uh, God, not man. Mm -hmm. And we have to start learning to be builders, not destroyers, not uh, slandering not down talking, not riding on nobody. It's just too much of that going on, uh, uh, negativity when there's so many things positive we can do if we come together as a whole. We don't have to turn our guns in. It's no way I, nobody gonna turn their guns in for a concert ticket. But at least we don't have to worry about each other. We got more than enough races that will come do something to any of us in here just because of the color of our skin. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. And it's sad that not only do I have to worry about them, but then I got to worry about my own people. That's just too much. You can't win. You got to worry about them fast and you got to worry about the other people. Yes, sir. Because yeah. they the closest exactly. to you. Close to you. That's what's wrong. And then another thing I don't like about it is like when you, when a black person look at a black person, what's the first thing they going to do? Like, why is you mugging me? Why is you looking at me? Yeah. But when a white person look at a white person, they say, congratulations, how you doing? It's always some positive. Mm -hmm. But it's nothing that they would out right on. No, it's it's they, always some bullshit. They don't even say hi in L.A. They say, where you from? See, that's crazy. That's crazy. Like, they they don't say, like how that. you doing, uh, ma'am, or nothing. They say, where you from? And it's like, say things to me. I don't gang bound or none of that. But I know I'm going to stand on whatever I say. So if I go to some place like that, and it's, it's going to cause a conflict because I don't gang bang at all. But you come at me like that, I'm going to say something to you. And it's going to be a problem. That's why I don't like stuff like that. I always stay away from stuff like that if I have to. Like if I see somebody in, in, this, in that type of area, I know I'm going the other way because my attitude is too bad for me to be in that situation. So I'm like, I'm gonna, if I see it, it come, I'm like, I'm going the other way because I know how I am. It's going to go, go the opposite way. So I always say, hey, let me stay away from this. So I ain't got to worry about this. Stay away from this. I ain't got to worry about this. And like I know myself now to the point where I don't have to be around certain stuff. And I know if I have to be somewhere, like I have, I have to have a gun somewhere, like I don't need to be there. And it's like I'm going I'm I'm to have one, but it's protect my family. It's not protecting me. Oh, I need to be there. It's protecting people who I got with me. It's yes, not sir. me. Mm -hmm. So it's like. <laughs> wait, wait. Go ahead. So it's like in that time frame, it's like it's, it's cool to have a gun, but don't have a gun to actually try to show out, try to kill people just because you got it. It's protect your family and you, and it's it's protecting. It's not showing off, and I hate that. Stop showing off for the ground because you got a gun. Stop showing off for social media because you got a gun. And when it's time to use it, you don't use it. How many people in this world had a gun in their lifetime and still died? A lot of them. So that gun ain't going to mean nothing because you got it. It's, it's how you use it and when you use it is the problem. So stop showing off a gun just because you have it. Yeah, yeah. Um, when when I, uh, I think I go back to uh, Drakeo and... I think he was uh, stabbed in the neck is yeah, what neck. I'm hearing. Um, when uh, stuff like that happened, um, and he was a rap artist, and, and you said something earlier, you said that it get home quicker with his mother, you know, to his mother than it do, you know, then. Of, it get quicker off of social media. Yeah, than off of social media, from, yeah, from, from a, a legal, legal representative. Uh, a legal representative. Yeah. They gonna pull out their phone. Too. Yeah, so, yeah, so before he could even, uh, before he could get to the hospital, it was already being said that YG uh, uh, Click had something to do with it. I don't know if that's true or not, but how the, at that point, people started putting other people in jeopardy when the social media platforms or the social media starts to amplify, the Internet starts to amplify things like that. Am I tripping or is this no. something that's he real? Said, he said earlier. That's what no, he said earlier. You, once that goes off on the Internet, you can't pull it back, you what's can't. been said, because it don't take but a second Somebody's through that Internet. Shot. I don't see them have, say, a function where it'd be two or three of them and they'll put it on social media and within 30 minutes you got two, three thousand people where everybody know this is where it's happening at. You know, you got telephone and tell a Negro. That's the quickest way, way before internet and that's how they do it now. Telephone or tell a Negro. I don't believe that tell a Negro. That's crazy. <laughs> so, that's the quickest way to spread a word. That's yeah. how it go. That's yeah, how it go, man. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so, yeah. So, um, and, and, and the next thing, you, you have to look around and just try to understand, like, 
you know, where can how can we how can we help the scenario? Because I don't see it just changing off the bat. You just try to get in and try to help to try to curve it to where it doesn't happen as much. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, you just try to uh, create some type of dialogue to where uh, you try to make it to where the uh, violence drop down. In fact, uh, from 2015, from the 100 days, 100 nights, when it was at one of its all times high, coming around 2017 or so forth, doing the efforts of a lot of people and stuff like that, uh, murder had went down at its lowest rate since 1966 in Los Angeles. And uh, once again, we go back to the elected officials. Instead of pouncing on that and, and, and keeping the dialogue and those people that were involved that were making it happen, they let it go. So now, uh, because of Black Lives Matter, and in most of these cities, a lot of uh, crime is spiking up, and it's a reason why crime is spiking up, or uh, murders aren't being solved. Because if you think you going to sit all these years and complain about a, a white police killing a black. And in the inner city, when something happened, where it be uh, race on race or whatever, and you think you're going to call them and they're going to rush out, they're not doing that. And that's what's happening in a lot of these cities where law enforcement just don't lay down. They don't lay them off, and a lot of people don't know these are the effects uh, one of the things that Black Lives Matter has caused in the inner city. You can call and say, hey, I thought it was a peeping Tom looking at my children, which is a true story. They didn't come out for the lady. The lady had to call me, hey, Melvin, uh, what can you do to help me to get some type of assistance because I work at night and I think somebody's uh, peeping into my uh, window and uh, peeping at And they did because they chased the young man the way they end up uh, finding the bike that he jumped off of. And so these type of things are making it very difficult in the inner cities to survive and live by. Right now, uh, it's a lawlessness that's going on in Los Angeles. I had a a friend that lost his uh, son, uh, lost his wife uh, to senseless gun violence purposely, but who cry about that? Who complain about that? I had a young man that I know uh, just a little old homeless guy. Never did nothing. Shot him eight times. So who to address these issues? Who who speaks for those that aren't slain by police, who aren't famous? And that's what I do. I try to bring issues that otherwise uh, another agencies wouldn't bring up because they also have families and loved ones to where they don't get the same respect as a high-profile case. Let me ask you about... Uh Joy badass, cause you you I know you you had sent me the pictures and you know I thank you for for uh, taking a picture with Boss Talk on with Joy badass. How how did you and him meet and and how did you become you know you guys come become uh um I would say to even be you know just just rocking out with the, with this type of guy. How did y'all how did y'all meet? Well, uh, Joy uh, and his cousin Wiley Bluestone. Uh, all of them out of Brooklyn and they're affiliated, associated. You know, we might, we'll just put it, we McCoys and some other people are the Hatfields. We are okay. McCoys. Okay. And uh, from there, uh, Joey uh, invited me to come, Wally, and we start, in fact, they start interacting the way the New York uh, McCoys start interacting with the LA McCoys on a high level and it started spreading the way. People from all over started to come to, and you know when it couldn't be done because you got to remember New York and L.A. wasn't like this. No, y'all had a big, big falling out right, back there, even this, on the rap game. Right, but this was going toward the uh, uh, reintegration uh, of them talking to each other, and from there I started hanging with Joy uh, when they was with Pro Era and all them, and I went and started hanging out. We went to concerts and we started talking, and they just. It's like me and let me hang around. And then uh, we had a shooting up at the park where a rival gang came and shot up our daycare center and fired like 15 shots into the daycare. And so uh, didn't know elected officials help. They didn't even write a report. So I told Joey, uh, let me borrow, get 10,000 to buy a security system so we can uh, uh, protect the kids. And Joy said, "Okay, I uh, I'll give you ten thousand, but then uh, local elected officials, instead of me getting the credit for it, then they went and finally decided to do something. 
And from there, uh, uh, I just started hanging out with Joy Wade. Let me privilege to him uh, on one of his albums, a song for the come out called Jim, so I'm on that. And every time he come, he get with me, and I look out for him, make sure he got safe passage or can move like he move. And I check in when I go to New York, and we just been like a uh, father and son. Wow, and and it, it just feel good to see that you link with him, and, and that you guys have that type of bond where y'all trust each other. Um, so I mean, I got some does he come to does he come to Cali? I want to stay on that. Me too. Uh, does he come to uh, Cali and uh, do concerts and music and stuff as he, well? He doing that. Uh, Book of Canaan. Uh, he was uh, donated money to the school, and a lot of people don't know. I think. Uh, I think he won a what was that? Uh, uh, Oscar. He won an award. Him and Puff Daddy for a short film. He's in uh, uh, Fifty Cents. Uh, what is that? Yeah, he in uh, uh, Book of uh, Canaan. Book of, yeah, uh, Book of Canaan. Uh, he's in that. So Joe, he's Paco Barone. Uh, uh, Paco Rabone. Uh, Cologne over across Sunset. So Joey guy has a lot going. You got a lot going on. A lot on. going on, but Joey been in the game for a long time for such a young age. And but a for, wonderful kid. Wonderful. To find wonderful find kid. somebody to, to look up to and talk to about different things that may be going on with him. That's a dope move. I like it, man. I like the fact that he has somebody he can say, hey, pick up the phone, man. This is what I'm thinking. Nah, man, that ain't this or this ain't that. And why not do it this way? That helps a lot of time, brother. Mm -hmm. You know. So what was you about to ask? I was saying, as you said earlier, as you when you say you check in, like some people looking at stuff, you check in some place, like it's like a bad thing. Like you got typically you check in, it's like it can actually help you, like you said, to help you move around. Like you wait, you need to move around. Like nothing wrong with checking in sometimes. It's like yeah. it actually can help you. It actually can save your life sometimes. But see, they use the term checking in to where once again it come to pride. Exactly. To where it, exactly. Ain't, it ain't like a they go, oh, I don't got to check exactly. in. Exactly. Like it's when it wrong. really ain't about that. I, it, uh, the term I say is it's just uh, like when you got a house and it's a no knock notice. I'm just announcing that I'm here. Yep. That's all. And it's a respectful thing to do, particularly when you're on somebody else's turf. You're not knowing what's going on here. The safest thing to do is to get with those and your crew that's from there and move how they move. Exactly. And keep your ass in your lane. And that's a good way to get back home, too. Yeah, so checking in uh, is not always a bad thing. No, you, no, you can it ain't check always in a and check in. It's just the term and the the, uh, the stigma how they attached use it. to it. It's how they use it to where, oh, I ain't got to check in or that. I just say, you know, like, I'm coming to this town and I'm going to get with you and tap in and that's that, you know, for communication purposes. But it's not mandatory. And that's what people think yes. like they tell exactly. you, oh, you better check in. And that's when the conflict call. But if you keep it on just a level of public safety, I would think and recommend that it would be best yeah. to go on and get with somebody when you particularly out here in these streets. And Especially when around. you don't know nobody but that and one person. And don't know nobody but that person. Why would you go and run around when it's always easy to kill a stranger? I promise mm -hmm. you. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to kill a stranger. Mm, mm, it's easy to kill a stranger. That's, yeah, those, are, right. those, are, that, those are words to, uh, of wisdom. Um, so, um, Joey Badass, like I said, I didn't know he was helping and, and doing things like that in, in the community like that. Joey does a lot of things, man. Joey gave Como, before he got uh, in his incident in New York, Joey was working with Mayor Como, uh, had donated $25,000 uh, to that school. Fabio Foreign, he does a lot. Uh, Brooklyn Batman, he does a lot. Uh, uh, quite a few uh, guys. Big U, he does a lot. Uh, 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 Bernard Cooper, A R O P, he does a lot. Skip, uh, 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 C Rag, that works with Marquise Dawson. It's a lot of people that do a lot of stuff they to get back to the community all around. They oh, work on okay, a national okay. level, uh, uh, local level, state level, national level, but a lot of times you won't get to hear or see what they do because they don't have time yeah. to be on social media and also their guidelines and protocols because of who they work for. Mayors, Camilla Harris, Maxine Waters, Karen Bass, Marquise Dawson, uh, 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 just a, a, a philanthropy of uh, 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 elected officials from the state, local level, as well as the federal Senate and so forth. See, I've worked and had a radio show in Washington, D.C. in 2000 called the Mo' Better Man Blues Show. I've had numerous shows. 
Uh, I reported on the 2000 Million Man March uh, back then. Uh, I was with uh, Martin Luther King's wife, Coretta Scott King, and a do lady named Dorothy Hyatt, the first one to ever own property on Pennsylvania Avenue. I stung out with them, boys wow. to men, Geronimo Pratt. I spoke there, uh, uh, the other little comedian guy that used to be. So I've been around in a lot of civil rights. I do civil rights. Uh, I'm an author. Uh, we produce in a movie, uh, a documentary called... Uh, uh, the World Epidemic, Senseless Gun Violence, which would have come out with Freeway Rick, uh, uh, Justice, Justified, uh, Fathers in Hip Hop, Justified, Bone Stugs and Harmony, uh, uh, The Lynch Mob, Chill, uh, Hutch from Above the Law, uh, Ice, Ice T, uh, Trade Eagle on Narriate, uh, uh, Rated X. Uh, we got just a, a whole lot of uh, guys, uh, uh, Sergeant Dorsey that be on CNN. We just got a whole big project that we've been going on for three years that we think is going to be very explosive and address this senseless gun violence that we think is a world epidemic and put a light on that and see what we can do also. When are we going to get the documentary, uh, Melvin Farmer? Uh, well, actually, Joey Manager, uh, cousin, Wally said, uh, Melvin, uh, We'll give you this certain amount, about 50, just to start writing a book. And like I told him, I don't really like talking about my past because contrary to what a lot of people think and they say, oh, this, 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 a lot of people don't know about people that have changed their life. This has been 50 years. And a lot of guys, family, don't know about their past history. And I try to keep it that way. I don't really like talking about what happened that era because I promise you, it's not going to be very nice at all. So I don't like talking about it, and very few do you hear from my era talk about that because we're not proud of what we do, but every time, oh, we don't want to hear these old men's stories. Well, nigga, you don't want to hear about Michael Jordan before he got famous. That's right. What's the difference? But when we speak, it's a problem. But when we speak, y'all trying to put it on y'all tape. The shit y'all doing, we was here way before you. You're not doing nothing different than what this game started about. But the problem is we try to choke been down this road before, and our past is mostly our future. <laughs> well, will we ever get that documentary? Oh, I'm working on it. When God, like if God tells me to write it, like I'm down here to go and look for a Bible school. Yeah, yeah, we you the, was going to talk about right, that. Right, I never read the Bible, but in my heart, I want to go to school. Okay. But I want to go to school to learn the Bible. Okay. So, no amount of money can make me talk about my life unless I want to. Of course. I don't want to be in front. I don't like that. I'm an introvert. Once I leave here, it take me two or three days to get my energy back. Yeah. Because everything you hear going to be from me is I, 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 unless we do something. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I am. I'm an individual. I like being alone. So I probably end up writing something uh, pretty soon when the spirit come into me and how I want to write it. But I get a lot of offers. I'm pretty sure you do. You got a dope story. I was just thinking about it because I interviewed uh, Freeway, Rick Ross, and he had one, but they ended up uh, sliding him forward and taking his story. Me and him talked about that. And, um, you know, just, you know, the stories that the, the, the your legacy, the time that you, the things that you've done, you know, the things that you've seen. Uh, I always tell you, like in LA, when we talked, it, we have to have that. That's that's therapy. That's therapeutic. It helps people to hear your story, and they may be going through something. You know, I always I know that helps. You haven't started writing yet. Mm -hmm. You haven't started writing yet. No, uh, I got another. Uh, thing that I'm doing with a man named Kawasi where we started where they want me to write 10 little short stories and then we're going to start. So I'm doing a little writing now to where I probably end up doing something where it'll be released. Also, we have a publishing company also, and I'm with black writers on tour because I've already published a book called The New Slave Ship that uh, uh, predicted mass incarceration in 98. So, no, I haven't started writing it, young the, man. The reason why I say it is because I was like, if you if you have to start writing, you can write it and then just put it up. So whenever you want to put it out, it'll already be there for you. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, I can't wait. I definitely know it's, it, it, I know it'll be a banger. I know it'll be something that everybody will be tuned into. Um, Snoop Dogg, mentioning all those names, you didn't mention Snoop. Um, is there any... Uh, I, 
thing that sticks out that he does. And you from Westside, Long Beach is another place. I don't know how it lays out out there, but I know you all, you guys know each other. Um, uh, do he do things in the community that you hear about and all that good stuff? All of them, all of them do a lot of stuff to give back to the community. It's just some people think they owe them something. Okay. Because uh, that's what happens a lot of times. Uh, uh, Tyrese, uh, uh, quite a few of them will come in this game, and they might not be gang members or something, and they might say, I'm from here, I'm from there. And then, you know. That, yeah, because that, that coincides, right? That, that coincides, and that makes it where, you know, well, if you using our name and ain't really put in no work, you're going to have to come back in another type of way and, and bring us on. But when it comes to Snoop, uh, just on the individual, he got his league. Uh, he uh, does videos. He gives out turkeys. Uh, he does a lot of things. He gave a, 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 a blue carpet uh, event for local crips where all of them could come. Then he gave one after his birthday. Then his mother died. And condolences to Snoop and the loss of his mother because, you know, when you lose your mother, that's almost like your past. Yeah, I know. Everything is over with. It ain't no future once your mm. mom or your dad gone. Everything fall behind you. So uh, condolences to him on that. But overall, a lot of people do a lot of stuff uh, to give back to the communities uh, where a lot of times, you know, they don't put it out there or brag about it. So I can't say nothing but kudos to him. To him, yeah. Um, I always just been a big fan of Snoop's, man. Snoop is a dope artist and ever since he started from doggy style to before that when he was with dre and 187 on the undercover cop i you know i i remember all those songs and him being a young snoop to being the snoop that he is today i seen him come in the game mm -hmm. and i seen the things that uh uh he he brought to the table you know far as the rap game go i, I think he's a pinnacle for the for the west coast when it come down to what he done in the time that he spent he dedicated his life to it and and so you know you you wouldn't have the dre that you have today if it was not for snoop mm -hmm. and you wouldn't have the snoop that you have today if it was not for dre so it goes hand in hand with those two when it come down to their artistic flow for me you know mm -hmm. and uh the, the 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 fact of the matter remains is um you know he's here now and he's still for some kind of way he's able to keep himself relevant in today's times a lot of people can't you know what i mean do that the way he does it his his legacy is different i know dre did the apple uh uh the uh, uh the deal with beats with apple and all that but it's still not the same as the aura that snoop leaves as you look at his legacy in his path is something about this dude that makes him different than anybody else on the west coast and i seen it from the time he started till now mm -hmm. yeah well you know he keep it real and he keeps some guys whose ears are to the pavement he got a uh cubone you got a uh uh who else will be running around with snoop he used to run with my boy reesey cup uh free reesey cup then he know the thorntons uh, Chico Bell, these are all of my guys uh, that I grew up with as an early age that Snoop probably looked up to or knew them. Mm -hmm. So I know Snoop helped out Reese Cup, and Reese Cup messed that up, the Thorntons. I know he keep my boy him, E-40, keep my boy Cuba on with his barbecued sauce and everything else going. So a lot of times Scoop, uh, Snoop will give some guys opportunity uh, if you got talent or, you know, he keep it where you can be accessible to him. I can say that. That's dope, man. And I, like I said, even on that end, then you look at his, uh, he did a podcast one time. I watched it all the time. And then he did, uh, uh, um, he did, uh, Break uh, the the show a cooking show. He's something else. Yeah, so that that was, yeah, with, with Martha, Martha Stewart. Stewart. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, I love this that dude, show. Yeah. This dude, uh, he's able to tackle each. Uh, uh, each thing that God puts in front of him in a way that makes him stay relevant. And like I said, uh, even with him starting out uh, with the two one three, you know, uh, with uh, Warren G and uh, they had a, it was a group they had before Nate Dog, you know, he before they came into yeah, yeah. This dude has and when when and you look at his story from the time he came in to the time when now he's still. 
that same essence is there, and 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 you can't. Most people lose that. Most people fall off. You've seen it. I can name them, but I won't do them like that. You, but most people don't stay relevant and stay consistent at he's as he's done at his age. At his age, man. Yeah, like he can still man. come out right now, and people gonna love him. Uh, people gonna show up, and uh, I seen him even down in Houston with Southside Shorty. I'm going to I'm going to find her too. I said when I go to Houston, but I seen him pull up on the on in the bus and show love even in Texas and the way that the Texas people embraced him, you know, just show everybody loves Snoop Doggy Dog. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that's just that it just is what it is, man. Um, from and that's from Texas. You know what I'm saying? Um, when you when I. I I wanted to ask you one more thing, and, and I got to ask you this, and I know it's not an easy question to to answer, and you're probably going to tell me no, but I don't care. I'm going to ask you anyway. As far as Charleston White, we'll ask you a part one and a part two on that question. Part one is, do you regret bringing him, uh, uh, dealing with him in the L.A. area when you guys was hanging out? No, because it really wasn't. A, uh, you seen the video. Yeah. Something happened with Charleston White. After uh, remember, I was down here in Dallas, and I had did a show with him, and I had another one hooked up with him after uh, 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 with uh, uh, Christopher Darden, Diamond Carter, and me and another lady named Doctor uh, uh, Desiree uh, uh, Mello was gonna host it. Where I hooked him up, like I say, everything he did from the first two or three years, uh, and it wasn't like he was infiltrating all around and this and that of stuff going on, because usually at that time. I had been displaced because police had ran in. And that's another thing about me being homeless. No, the police, everybody know the police just had ran in and put me out to where they didn't told me, Melvin, get your ass out this town. If you come back in three years, we're going to kill you or arrest you behind my son and his incident. So, and I just, you see, I come right back up like Bill Cream, a little dab of do you. So anyway, no, I don't regret that because, uh, it really wasn't nothing. He hung out a minute and then did what he did and then went on about his business. It wasn't no social where we just did this and we did that because it could have been. Uh, I don't have met people where they call themselves coming in, tapping in, and a lot of times I put them in the direction of whoever they want to meet and they end up being FBI informants. So it could have went way worse than this. A lot of times you don't know who these people is. Like I say, they come up to St. Andrews Park and they want to tap in, meet people and this and that. Uh, but it's ironic that Charleston White came to me for protection uh, to walk these streets and he get it and everybody he talking about, these people embraced him. So I have a vested interest in this because my face is on him. And that's why that's how they go. But so that's, that's the first part. Do I regret it? I don't look at anything that happened yesterday. The only thing good about yesterday is stay over, and the only thing about tomorrow is stay not promised. I stick wow. with it right now. Wow. So and 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 I say that because um, when you when you went back after this interview. Um, you I mean, I know you was on different platforms. I seen you. It was like I could every time I turned the thing on, it was you popped up or a Tola or whatever. Or and, and and I say that to say, did the how did the people of California look at that? As far as you, you know what I mean. As far as you and him having this blowout, I know when Mob James and him had an issue, uh, uh, it was a, like okay, man, that that wasn't handled the correct way. I ain't had no problems with. Uh about how I handled it, uh, nobody even said nothing about it. It ain't nothing to talk about because it could have got, it can get, uh, they don't see me handle stuff another way too. Oh. So, that, no, that just, and, and I've seen other ones. So this is just nothing. It's done and over with, no harm, no foul. But we can stay up here where I'm going to be doing on anybody ass. I'm going to be doing fact checks when you open your mouth. Charleston White can come here. I'm here till Friday. And he can sit right over there again, and whatever he run in his mouth, I'll probably kill him off. See, he won't sit in front of me, because you can't do that. But he got an open table where he, I'm hitting his town now. He can sit right there where that man at and step to the mic. All he got to do is inform you. And let's step to the mic and hear what you got to say. And I'll debate you right now. A fist swell up, and I promise you, I embarrass him. I promise you. All that crazy shit he talking and these people overlooking. Like, for instance, uh, all young people are gang members. That's the craziest shit I heard. All dudes go to jail to be and come out Muslims. Half the people in jail can't even, it's illiterate where they can't even read. 
And see, he'll go to the other side of just that just to show you how dumb half the shit he say. When they go to prison and they end up being a Muslim or a Christian, you know why most of them do that if they ain't believing in that? Because that's usual the neutral ground to where when these uh, 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 wars start, racial wars, where you got the BGFs, the Mexican Mafia, the Aaron Brotherhoods, the Northern Familiars, the ABs, the UBNs, the Vanguards, the Blue Notes, the uh, Black Coats. All these are prison gangs. Most people don't even know the difference between a prison gang and a street gang. So usually in prison, a lot of them that were gang members or political parties, that's a way to get out to where you're neutral and don't have, you got a way out to where you ain't in this game. So a lot of times, uh, that's, that's dumb. And to say that Crips are Bloods, and you know why he picked Crips and Bloods? Because he's really trying to go to the witness protection program because when he holler out about snitches, oh, the white man snitch, but when a white person snitch, they get full uh, interrogations of the law and the matters in which they're filing on. And they get all the police functions. They can go get relocated. They can go get a, a new job. They get new identity. They get a new car. They get a new home. But when a black tail in the inner city, all they do is get the fingerprinted and tail and run this tape. Then they might get put right back next to the person they telling on. So there's no incentive uh, for those in the Los Angeles to tell because it's dangerous. I see it all the time, particularly these high profile murders. Ask Jennifer Rivers about the red shoe murder when her son was killed and after all the hoopla, she calling me every day, Melvin, they threatening me at court, or uh, this and that. But once that shine go off, the only ones there left is the family. So it's a lot of things that he's saying that need to be fact checked, and he, like I say, he can step right here on the mic. Okay. See, mm -hmm. let me ask you this, and 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 I ain't gonna hold you after this. Um, and this is a good one here. This is the last, and uh, I believe this is where I'm gonna roll it up. Um, I hear you say a lot of times. You told me you said, uh, "Man, I like him. He he, all right guy. You know, I like to get the fella or whatever." Talking about Charleston, could you guys ever be friends again? Oh, uh, no, nah, we can't be that because you can't take back what you say. That's like doing a robbery then giving the money back, man. What the hell are you talking about? What's said is said, and he's going to stand on his words. Or he can step to the mic and say it right here. I don't, ain't going to look for him. I ain't got no animosity before him. But that, that's, that's for me. That's for anybody. I'm looking at his history. He lied on people to try to climb to the top. That don't work with me. I'm not one to uh, go and go and say this and that, but he also went and said he's telling the police on me. So he don't have no regard for me and my daughter or me and my mama. He better stay in this lane. But I'm here in L.A. once again. See, now you put me in that mode because I will get in that mode because I look at this dirty rat, a rat, where other people put him in the game, like he king shit a turd island, and he a snitch. But I'm here in your town, and wouldn't you want to talk about it? Step to the mic. Hey, man, that's another, that's Melvin Farmer. Hey, man, uh, do you got anything else, uh, Money Moses, for Melvin Farmer? Anything you want to ask? You wasn't here last no, time. I, I don't ask, no, I just want to like, I like the way you carry yourself, and you keep yourself up. Yeah, like, but I want to say this also to end this. And you knew I need to really ask Charleston White, why you don't say the name of that school in Memphis where you went and talked to the kids? Because they're going to be in trouble. I'm not through with that. He should not be around kids, and we have information that he attacked a 16-year-old kid uh, from the horse's mouth. He also got into a squabble to where the person that gave that event said, Melvin, my final question was to him. If you had to have Charleston White around any kids, would it be yes or no? That's all I needed to know. And he said, I would never, ever let nobody be around Charleston White that's a child. He said it was the worst three hours he ever seen. He threatened everybody, called kids faggots. And like I say, I don't have nothing against them, but you do not. Nobody should let nobody be around no children like that, particularly bragging about raping. 
How you think that look at us as a black? I've been around murderers, hillside stranglers, Charles Manson, and I ain't never heard nobody brag about raping no woman. Not one time in my life. We need to really hold him accountable for that. Well, hey, man, that's Melvin Farmer, man. Uh, um, hey, man, we love you, brother. I love everybody, man. And uh, we Sometime. <laughs> Um, I tell you, man, uh, we love you at Boss Talk 101, man. We always enjoy you coming down. Thank you for coming. Oh, man, thank you, and thank you, Nelson. That's Mighty man. Moses, Mighty man. Mighty Moses, you up in here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Say, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out. Hey.